Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's look at spiral matrix. We are given an M by N matrix and all we need to do is return all of the elements in spiral order. So the order that we're given the elements in is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? If you go from left to right, but we actually wanna return these elements in spiral order. So we are gonna start at the top left and we're gonna go one, we're gonna go right, two, go right again, three. Now we can't go right anymore. So now we're gonna go down because that is spiral order. So we're gonna do six, go down one more time, do nine. Now go left because we can't go down anymore. We're gonna get eight, go left again. We're gonna get seven. Now we can't go left anymore. So we go up to four. And if we try to go up now, we actually see, well, we already visited that, right? The one's been visited. So now we actually go right. We have the five and the five is the last element. If we try to go right, we cannot go right anymore. So how can we write an efficient algorithm to do that, right? To worry about, okay, we're going in this direction and then eventually we have to change directions and all that stuff. Well, in my opinion, the easiest way is also the most efficient way. So one thing to notice is we, let's say we start at the top left, we go right, 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 we go here. So we cross out all these elements. Then we go down, 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 we get here. Then we go left, we go here. So we cross out these elements and then we go up, right? So we went all four directions. We went right, we went down, we went left, and then we went up until we couldn't anymore, but we still have some elements left. But do you see what we kind of did here? We took the outermost layer and shrinked it, right? So now we have a sub rectangle or sub matrix here that now we're going to do the exact same algorithm on. But you notice that our boundary, our left boundary was over here and our right boundary was initially over here, but now we shrinked it, right? This is our new sub matrix, right? Originally we had this. So our left and our new left and right boundaries are here, right? So we shrunk it by one. We had to move our left and right boundaries inward. Similarly, we had a top boundary of here and we had a bottom boundary over here, but we had to shrink that as well, right? We had to move our top boundary down one and we had to move our bottom boundary up by one. So now our top boundary is over here and our bottom boundary is over here and we still have some elements to go in spiral order. So again, what are we gonna do with this sub matrix? Well, we're gonna start at the top left, which is over here, and we're gonna go in spiral order. So now we're gonna go right, so we get to seven. But notice now, notice now how we pretty much have gone through all the elements, right? And so since we done these elements, what we can now say is our left and right boundaries were moved once more, right? So left and right are now at the same position or they've intersected or overlapped or whatever. And so what that basically means is we don't really have a rectangle anymore, right? Our, our boundaries are not in a position. So therefore we don't have to continue going anymore, right? And you can tell by the picture, well, we already visited every single element. We don't have to continue the spiral. We're just gonna repeat old elements anyway. So that's the main idea, but I'm just gonna show you, I'm just gonna actually walk through the algorithm and show you a couple uh, things that I'm gonna do slightly differently. So I am gonna initialize the left boundary over here because this is our zero column, right? And this is our third column, but what I'm actually gonna do is put the right boundary over here, just mainly because it's gonna make the code a little bit easier for us. And so this is the zeroth row and this is the second row, right? So what I'm gonna do is put our top boundary over here and I'm gonna put our bottom boundary, not at index two, but one more. So I'm gonna put our bottom boundary over here just because it makes the code a little bit easier. And so as you can tell, basically what we're doing is we have four pointers and these four pointers are gonna make, co make coding this solution, this spiral matrix solution a lot easier for us. We are gonna start over here because it's the position that our top left is pointing at. So we're always going to start at the top left position. And so we are going to have an output. We know the output is going to be a list or an array. So we're going to add one to our output. And then we are going to go 
right. So, so whenever we start at the top left, we're gonna go right because we're gonna do the first row. So now we're gonna be at two, we're gonna add two to our output, and we're just gonna keep repeating this until we reach our right boundary. Our right boundary is gonna tell us when we can stop. Now we get to three, we add three to our output, now we get to four, we can add four to our output. And now we know we cannot go any further. We've basically reached our right boundary. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go down. But before we go down, since we just did this entire row, we added it to the output. We don't really need this top boundary anymore, right? But what can we do with it? We can basically shift it down because our new top boundary of our rectangle right now, look at our current rectangle is this. So our top boundary belongs in this spot. So now we are going to go down. We're gonna reach this eight. We're gonna add that eight to our output and we're gonna go down one more time and we're gonna keep going down until we reach our bottom boundary, right? That's pretty obvious from looking at the picture. So now we reach our bottom boundary and the last value is 12. So now, obviously, we're going to start going left, right? But do you notice any differences about our matrix now? Well, clearly, we just did this entire row. What does that tell us? Well, that tells us we can update our right boundary, right? Because if you look at the new rectangle, we've, we've moved our top boundary over here, but we can also take our right boundary and, and move our right boundary in this position, right? Of course, the left and bottom boundaries can still be the same because look at our rectangle, we need those boundaries still. But now we are going to go left, we reach an 11, we can add that to our output. We go left again, keep going left until we reach our left boundary, right? Until we reach the element at our left boundary, but in this case it's inclusive. When we were going right, we were going to stop before we got to the right boundary. And this is basically just to make the code easier, even though it's a little bit inconsistent. So we, now we get a 10, we add that 10 to our output. We go left one more time, we get a nine and we add that to our output. But now you can see that this left boundary is where we need to stop. But as you can see, we just finished the entire bottom row. What does that tell us? Well, our bottom boundary can be shifted up by one over here because our new rectangle is like this, right? Our right boundary tells us about this. Our bottom boundary tells us about this. Our top boundary tells us about this. And our left boundary tells us about this. So this is the resulting rectangle, one by three. So now we're gonna put the bottom boundary here and now we're gonna start going up and we're not just gonna keep going up forever, we're gonna stop once we reach our top boundary, which is pretty easy for us because we only have one element and now we're at the top boundary. So we get a five and we add that to our output. Now you can see that this, this problem has been reduced. We took our matrix and chopped off each side of it. We chopped off the top, the bottom, the right column and the left column but we can still continue our, our algorithm as it is. The only thing that we have to update now is take our left boundary because we just did the entire left column now and shift it to the right by one. So now again, we're gonna start at the top left because the top is pointing here, the left is also pointing here. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna go right, but we have to add six to our output. So we add a six to the output. We keep going right until we reach this boundary, right? Which we've reached once we've gotten to the seven. So we add the seven to the output and now we stop because we reached the right boundary. And since we've just finished this top row, what are we gonna do? We're gonna update the top pointer, right? We're gonna cross it out and we're gonna shift it down over here, right? So now top is over here as well as bottom, they're both pointing at the same row. And basically that's the condition. Once pointers reach, like in this case, top and bottom reach, but it could have been possible that left and right reach the same position. If either of those things happen, then we can stop our algorithm because we know we've 
done every single element that we needed to. So now let's get into the code. And by the way, the time complexity of this is big O M by N, which is the dimensions of the matrix. The memory complexity is big O of one because we are not saving any extra memory. We're just running the code and it's big O of one if you do not count the output as extra memory. So we have our result variable. I'm going to have the four pointers that we mentioned left and right. So left is going to be initially at zero. Right is going to be the length of the matrix. Uh, right is basically going to be the number of columns plus one, which is exactly what the uh, length is going to give us. We also have a top and bottom variable. So top is going to be zero. We know we start at top left is zero, zero. The bottom is going to be the length of the matrix, which is going to tell us the number of rows. And basically all I'm going to do is just keep looping until we know that either of the pointers cross. So we know that left has to be less than right. We don't want them to meet each other and top has to be less than the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is go left to right and get every single get every value in the top row. So every I in the top row. So I'm just going to iterate for I in range left to right. And this is basically why I'm setting the right uh, out of bounds because in Python, it's going to go from left, which is initially going to be zero. Maybe right is, let's say four. It's going to uh, it's basically going to go from zero to three in this case. That's what Python does. The four is non-inclusive. So this right value is non-inclusive. And so for each of these values, we know all we have to do is append it to our result. So how do we get the value? Well, we know we're in the top row. So for the row, we just put top for the column. We can put I. And since we just completed our top row, before we do anything else, let's update our top variable. So if we increment it by one, basically what we're doing is shifting top down by one. Next, I wanna get every I in the right column, right? The rightmost column. How can we do that? Well, I'm gonna iterate I in range from top to bottom, right? It's as easy as that. And we are allowed to do this because we just incremented our top by one. So we're not going to have any repeated elements. So now I'm just going to take every single one of these elements and add it to our result. So the row that we're in is, of course, I because we're going from top to bottom. The column that we're in is right, but we're going to subtract by one because we know that our right is actually out of bounds. And so after we do this, we know we just completed the rightmost column. So what can we do? We can take our right variable and decrement it by one because then we're shifting it to the left. Now, this is the part that you're kind of going to have to trust me on. So, so basically, if the pointers have crossed, so if this condition is no longer true, what we have to do is break out of our loop. And if you don't understand exactly why we're doing this, I would encourage you to run this entire code or at least uh, do it by hand on a couple examples. So imagine our matrix was this. If we had like a single row matrix, see what happens when you do that. Or imagine if we had a column matrix like this. Uh, see what happens when you run this code. So we did the top row and we did the rightmost column. So now we have to do the bottom row. And we know we have to do this from right to left. So that's going to be a little annoying. So we're going to go for I in range. So we're going to start at our right boundary minus one because we know our right is actually uh, a little bit farther to the right. And we're going to do this from right to left, but left, we're also going to take minus one because that's how Python works. The left is non-inclusive. So if we actually want to go all the way to left, we have to subtract it by one. And to do this in reverse order, we just have to add a negative one. So basically what we're doing is going from right to left in reverse order, so backwards. So now we're gonna take each of these and append it to our result. So we are in the bottom row. So for the row, we're gonna take bottom minus one because we know even the bottom pointer is actually out of bounds by just one value, right? So this is just an off by one error. And the column is gonna be I, that's what we're doing when we're going from right to left. And so after we've done this, we've just done the bottom row. So we're going to update the bottom pointer. How are we going to update it? 
in this case, we subtract it by one if we want to shift it upwards. So last but not least, we want to get every I in the leftmost column, right? So we can, and we want to do that from bottom to top because we are going in spiral order. So for I in range, we're going to start at the bottom, but we are have, we have to subtract it by one to make sure we don't get the off by one error. And we're going to go all the way to top, but we're again going to subtract by one. Basically, we're doing the same thing that we just did up here. So we're going from bottom to top in reverse order. So we had a negative one. And now for each of these elements, we're going to add it to our result. So matrix, the row is going to be I. That's what we're doing when we're iterating from bottom to top. The column is going to be the leftmost column. And after we've completed this, we are allowed to increment left by one because we just completed the entire left column. So we're shifting our left pointer to the right by one. So this is the code with these comments. It makes it seem a little longer than it actually is, but this code is not too long. The only thing we have to do now is return the result that we just computed, the array. Now we can run this code. And you can see the code is pretty efficient. And one thing I'll mention is that see, we're kind of repeating the same thing like four times over here. In total, that is only like 12 lines of code. But if you wanted, you could put it in a helper function. But I think in this case, a helper function just makes it more confusing. I prefer to actually write this out because it's pretty obvious when you write it out and add a comment what exactly we're doing. But other than that, I hope this was helpful. I hope it showed you that this problem can be written in pretty simple code. And if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.